4-5, quadratic equations. So in this section, our objective is to solve quadratic equations by factoring and to solve quadratic equations by graphing. Factoring is the one that we are going to do more, most often, and that's what we're going to sort of use when we are uh, going to take a quiz or a test on this chapter. Um, graphing is great, and it's good to know how to understand it, how to do it, and so we'll look at a little bit of how to solve quadratic equations using a graph as well. Our essential understanding is that to find the zeros of a quadratic function, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, we must solve the related quadratic equation ax, plus B, AX squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero which means that any time we're going to try to solve these quadratic equations, the most important step is to make sure that it is set equal to zero. All right. Let's look at this quick warm-up problem right here. So, as part of an engineering project, your team is drawing a highway tunnel on a coordinate system. The tunnel opening is in the shape of a parabola, as we can see on the diagram right there. Uh, you need to finish the drawing. What are the coordinates of the point C? Okay, so we can use what we know about uh, parabolas to figure out the coordinates of this point. First of all, B is at the highest point, so we know that that is the vertex, which means that that line right down there cuts the parabola exactly in half because it is the axis of symmetry. So because of that, I know, well, I know this distance right here is 6.4, and then this distance right here is another eight so if i add those together i know that this whole distance from here to here is going to be 14.4 which means that because this is because this line right here that goes down the middle is the axis of symmetry this distance right here is also 14.4 okay and we can just add that to 6.4 to figure out that my x coordinate is going to be 20.8. And of course, my y coordinate, this point is on the y axis, so my y coordinate is zero. Okay. So now we have three interesting points on this parabola. We have these two points, the two points where the parabola crosses the x axis, and we have this point B, the vertex. Okay. Those are going to be the three most important points when we are trying to figure out, when we're working with parabolas, is we have learned how to find the vertex. Now we're going to learn how to find the two x-intercepts, also called the zeros of the function. Okay? So whenever a graph of a function intersects the x-axis, f of x is equal to zero, a value of x for which f of x is equal to zero is called a zero of the function. Most parabolas have two zeros, two places where the function crosses the x-axis. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's not any, but most of the time there are two. In order to figure out what these zeros actually are, we're going to use something called the zero product property. Okay? So you can solve some quadratic equations in standard form by factoring the quadratic expression and then using the zero product property. What the zero product property says, that if I have two different variables and I multiply them together, or two different things, if I multiply them together and get an answer of zero, then one of these two things must be zero. That's the only way to get zero when you're multiplying. Okay? Something has to be zero uh, to get zero when you multiply two things together. Okay? So, because of this, when we factor our quadratic and we have our, my two binomial terms multiplied together, something like this, okay. a plus b, a plus c, it doesn't matter, whatever it is, when I have these two things equal to zero, one of these two terms must be zero. That's what the zero product property said. Okay, so let's see how to use it. So we're going to solve a quadratic equation by factoring. Okay, so let's factor my trinomial right there. And if I read it correctly, I can see that I want the factors of 6 that add to negative 5. Okay, whoops. Okay, so let's do that. Let's take my factors of 6 
two mother two numbers that multiply together to give me six. Add them up, you get minus five. That's gonna be x plus three. And, sorry, x minus three, x minus two, and I set this equal to zero. Now, because of the zero product property, one of those two terms must be equal to zero, which means that x minus three has to be equal to zero, or x minus two has to be equal to zero, which means that x is gonna be equal to three, or x is gonna to have to be equal to two. And so those are my two answers. Those are the two places where this parabola crosses the x-axis at three and at two. To solve it by graphing, first set it equal to zero. So we would have two x squared plus seven x minus 15 is equal to zero. Uh, and then I'm going to plot it. Okay. I could try to factor this, and I can actually factor this expression, right? I see the factors of 2, 1 and 2, the factors of 15, 1 and 15, and 3 times 5 to get them to uh, subtract to 7. Okay, so I know that these two are going to be negative, or actually that's not true. Let's just subtract to 7. So we have Two times, oh, here we go. Two times five is 10. One times three is three. And I want a positive seven, so that has to be a negative three. As I build my factors, I have x and 2x, because my first terms have to multiply together to give me 2x squared. And then the one multiplies together with the three, which means the three goes over there. And the other term, the 5, goes right there because the last two terms have to multiply together to give me negative 15. And I want my 10 to be positive and my 3 to be negative. So I could have factored this, and then I could have solved it. x is going to be equal to negative 5 if I set that equal to 0. And this one, 2x minus 3, is equal to 0. Add 3 to both sides. 2x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 3 over 2. So, that wasn't solving with the graph. So we factor that one again. I could, however, have graphed this and looked at the graph. Okay. So looking at this graph, I can see a couple points. I can see that there's an x-intercept at negative 5, and there's an x-intercept at 1.5. So the same answers that I got from factoring, I can just look at the graph and tell. The graph also shows the vertex, which we could get if we wanted to using the formula x is equal to negative b over 2a and y is equal to f of negative b over 2a right, to find the other more most important point of my quadratic. Okay. So graphs are helpful, but since we don't have a graphing utility, um, you should be able to do it most, most of the problems by factoring. Sometimes, however, there are some there are some problems that are a little bit more complicated, okay? like this problem right here. So let's look at it. From the time Mark Twain wrote the celebrated jumping frogs of Cavarius County in 1865, frog jumping competitions have been growing in popularity. The graph shows a function modeling the height of one frog's jump, where x is the distance in feet from the jump start. And here is my function, y is equal to negative 0.029x squared plus 0.59x. Well, this this problem is not so complicated because it doesn't have a it doesn't have a constant term over here. So we can write this y is equal to negative 0.029x squared plus 0.59x. I should notice that both of these have an x in common. So y is going to be equal to x times negative 0.029x plus 0.59. Then I can set this equal to zero to figure out the two most important points, the x-intercepts. So now I have my first term there. So set that equal to zero. So x is equal to zero. And that's what that point right there says, is that this frog is going to start jumping at zero. 
Okay. My other term is going to be negative 0.29x plus 0.59 is equal to zero. Oh, I forgot a zero in there. So x is going to equal to negative 0.59 divided by 0 0.029. Plugging that into a calculator. gives me x is equal to 20.34, about. Okay. Now, let's take a look at these two questions right here, A and B. How far did the frog jump? Well, if I look at my graph, and I have a better graph of this in a second, the frog started jumping at zero, and my other intercept is the place where it landed. So the frog jumped 20.34 feet. How high did the frog jump? Frog jump? Well, if I want to know that, I have to know the vertex, the place where this function got the highest. So in order to help me with that, I'm going to graph the function. And we can see the graph of this function right here. Okay. So my estimate right here was pretty close because this frog landed at 20.345. Okay, and I can clearly see the vertex right up here is going to be 10.172 feet. Okay. So, graphing can help us gra help help figure this out. If I didn't have a graph, if I wanted to find the height of the frog, I would have to use the formula y is equal to negative b over 2a to find this coordinate, 3, and then plug 3 back in to get my y coordinate. Now, might have a question from time to time about reasonable domain and range. Okay, the reasonable domain for any quadratic, well, the domain for any quadratic is all real numbers. But this frog cannot jump negative. Okay, so a reasonable domain for frog jumping is probably between zero and something bigger than this because we might we might have another frog we could say uh we can we could come up with a reasonable number about what the furthest a frog could ever possibly jump would be um maybe something around the lines of uh 30 or 40 feet or something like that okay and the reasonable range is well something that's going to be over Oh, sorry, reasonable range would be my y value. So we know that this frog got got up to three feet, okay, which means that, you know, my reasonable range would be something above that, okay? And before I said that three would be what you would get when you plug this in, this is my x-coordinate, 10. So when we had plugged, when we had figured out negative b over 2a to find my x-coordinate and my vertex, I would have gotten 10. Plug in 10, and you would have gotten three, okay? But the reasonable domain then, the domain, let's say x is between 0 and 30, and my range y is between, whoops, y is between uh, 0 and about 5. Okay, And that is 4-5 quadratic equations. If you get nothing out of this, make sure you know how to factor a quadratic set it equal to zero, and find the two different factors like in this example.